Hey everybody! In this video we're going to cover barbell cycling and you will receive some valuable tips there. With me today I have Stefano, he's going to demonstrate and I'm Chris and I do the explanation as always. First, why is barbell cycling important for CrossFit? In the sport of CrossFit we want to move and implement as fast as possible to get a fast time. And in order to do that we need to be efficient. Efficiency means we want to use the least amount of energy to move the barbell, for example, from the floor to overhead for the snatch or from the shoulder to overhead with the push press or the power jerk. We're going to cover different techniques, different styles and some variations of barbell cycling for CrossFit. The first thing we're going to start with is the shoulder to overhead in different variations. Stefano is going to grab the barbell now, brings it to his shoulders into the front rack position and now he's just performing a classic push press with a re-rack where he brings it back to the barbell and now repeats. That would be our classic shoulder to overhead as a variation with the push press. As you can see it's not very fast and to conserve energy to be faster, for example in a workout, we would cycle the push press something like this, where we go directly back into the dip and push out into the push press. Do one more and relax. As you could see, by bringing down the barbell directly into the dip and then pushing out to the overhead position, the rep speed, like the speed it takes to finish one repetition, increased dramatically and that saves Stefano some energy and he also has a mechanical advant ad advantage there because his muscles and tendons store elastic energy and can release it when he reverses the movement. Something you want to think about is to reverse the movement as fast as possible. So you don't want to spend any time in the dip position. Stefano is going to demonstrate another set. Do three more. As you can see, he spends no time in the dip and immediately pushes out of it. Okay, and relax. Thank you. The push press is one of the simpler exercises. When we move on to the power jerk, it gets more complicated and we have to think about a lot of things. Stefano now is going to demonstrate the power jerk as singles, where he jumps under, moves his feet, brings the bar back down and resets. Do one more and relax. Thank you. Similar to the push press, this wasn't very efficient in terms of overall time to finish the amount of reps he did. To work on the push press with the same intention as for, uh, for the power jerk, to translate what we did on the push press to the power jerk, we have to take more things into consideration. For example, the feet. We usually refer to it as jumping and landing or jumping and catching position. When Stefano accelerates the barbell, he has his feet directly underneath his hips. Whereas when he catches the barbell, he usually brings out his feet a little bit wider to have a more stable, supportive position with the barbell overhead. When we cycle the power jerk at maybe 50 to 75% of your maximum, it's not important that you really move your feet and that your feet leave the floor and you want to more go for a technique which we call bolted or no feet. No feet refers here to the feet movement and we think about it that the feet stay bolted on the front side of the foot. That means Stefano is going to bring his feet into the perfect position now which is somewhere in the middle between his usual jumping stance and his catching stance. Now he's going to grab the barbell, brings it to his shoulders and he performs five touch and go push jerks without moving his feet. Do one more. Thank you and put the bar down. As you could see, this style of cycling the barbell was much more efficient again. And by staying bolted, 
We even save some time when we bring the barber back down because we can immediately go into the next rep instead of bringing the feet back in. This takes some time of playing around where you find your optimal position. As always, this is very individual, so we would recommend to try out different things, different positions for the feet. The next thing we're going into are movements from the floor. These are cleans and snatches. For this video, we are going to focus, or we, we continue to focus on the no feet movement, where Stefano stays bolted throughout all the movements he does. When we do the clean, he picks up the barbell, brings it to his hips. Usually we would start from the floor, but this, this is something we will demonstrate later. When we do the clean, we have a different style of bringing the barbell down to get into the most advantageous position to cycle it efficiently. Here, the most important thing to think about is to push your hips back so that your knees leave room for the barbell to go to. That means when Stefano drops down, he pushes his hips back until the barbell has passed his knees and is now on the mid-chin level where it would be if we would set it up with barbell. C come up again with a deadlift and do this now for three more reps. As you could see, his start position now deviates a little from our usual clean technique, which you could find in another video. But this is a very, very specific tool we would use in the barbell cycling, but not necessarily when we go for a run rep max clean. That's like a very important side note here. Can you enter the same position again? Like where you bring the barbell back down? No, to, to, the, to the mid chin level, I'm sorry. And just hold it at mid chin. To clarify, his hips now are a bit more, a bit higher than usual, and he really loads his posterior chain, which, which helps him to engage a lot of muscle into the movement. What Stefano is going to do now is he's going to do five muscle cleans from that position. And as you can see, as he brings the barbell to his hips, the hips immediately shoot back and allow the barbell to travel straight down. Okay, and relax. Thank you. Very, one very important thing is when you bring the barbell back down from the top, from the front rack to your hips again, that you try to catch the right moment to ride it straight back down instead of stopping. So what we don't want is to catch the barbell, wait at the hip and then go down. We need to find the right timing to ride it straight down into our starting position. Very important here is that you start with a very light weight, for example, like Stefano right now, with the empty, empty barbell just to practice the, te the technique. And then you can progress towards heavier weights. So we're now going to set up for our power clean from the floor, where we still want to stay bolted, as you remember from the power jerk. Bolted here means Stefano has two stance widths, whereas this is his jumping stance and when he moves his feet out for example when he catches a power clean then he would go to his catching stance and for the bolted power clean the truth lies somewhere in the middle so his feet are like a bit wider than his catching his pulling stance and a bit narrower than his catching stance again this is very individual and you need to play around with it a bit Stefano is now going to demonstrate five touch-and-go bolted power cleans. As you could see, he still throws his hip, hip, hips back as soon as the barbell makes contact with his thigh. And he doesn't move his feet where his front foot always stays connected to the floor. Another thing we're always looking for is that we don't shift too towards our heels too much when we bring back the barbell. So something you should always feel is the pressure of your big toe on the floor. You could even press down with your big toe a bit to have the perfect balance and not shift back too much. Because when you lose balance with a heavy weight, the rep is basically over and you start stumbling and basically need to start over again. 
Stefano is doing another set of five touch and go power cleans. Also take note of how close he moves the barbell to his body. Basically the barbell is almost moving in a straight line up and down. Thank you. Another benefit when cycling a barbell like this, we have some recoil of the plate hitting the floor. So there's a little bounce that makes the first pull a little bit easier for you. That's why we get away with a higher starting position as we explained earlier, that the hips usually are a bit higher than we would usually have it for a regular power clean. This concludes the first part of our barbell cycling series. Obviously, there's a lot more to cover. We haven't spoken about hang variations. We haven't spoken about snatches at all. If you're interested in these as well, make sure to stay tuned for the second part of a video that you can find in one of our playlists. And there are a lot, a lot of other different things as well. So make sure to go there, check out the playlist, check out the other tutorials. And if you feel you like this stuff, leave us a like and maybe subscribe to our channel, we would certainly appreciate it.